For this episode, Bruce Kay asked about the usefulness of capability maps, how capability mapping works, how it connects with things like business process mapping and relating business strategy to IT strategy. Well, where I started from this, this is actually where I personally started in enterprise architecture, was on what we could there, we called functional business model, which effectively was a kind of cap capability map that described what the organization did as a whole. And from there, we then derived what business information was each of those uh, areas doing. And from there, we derived information systems, which in turn drove and guided us on our IT strategy. So let's have a how-to on this, a practical how-to. If we think of a typical business, we can partition businesses, every business, every organisation, essentially into five different parts, which are stuff coming in, stuff we do, stuff that goes out, stuff support services that generally support everything going on, and what we might call management functions, things that deal with change, you know, deal with coordination, change, guidance, that kind of area. So every business is exactly the same in that sense. If we then break those into each of those boxes into five to 10 bits, we'll end up with 50 boxes that describe what goes on typically in our kind of industry. So that's the next tier down, the level of detail. We've added a bit of detail to this five part box. So we've now got about 50 boxes that describe the general functions, the general capabilities needed to make this kind of business work. Now we add another level of detail again, and let's have a look at the specific bits that we do in each of these 50 boxes. We take those into around five or so each. We want to end up with something that will fit on a single sheet of paper that's, that's typically at about A3 or large size, and but will still be readable in smaller size on a standard A4 or US letter sheet. We've now got a list of all of the different basic functions that are going on. Now you'll have a lot of politics on this because everyone wants all of their functions to be listed. But across the whole of the space, you want to summarize it to a total of about 250 boxes. Those describe all the different bits, like we were saying, sort the mail in a postal environment. We then say, well, what are the major functions or major capabilities that are needed to sort the mail? Well, we need the machines, we need the human sort, we need the IT boxes coming in, we need to have things to, to deal with it going in, things to deal with it coming out. Then from that, your 250 boxes, we can then say, well, which bits in all of these boxes are people doing the same thing or working on the same kinds of information? Now, in that particular company, we broke that down to about 20 different chunks that connected across all of the different space. And we color coded them, as you can see here. Now, from that, what we called the business systems model, the models that were the areas that were dealing with the same kind of stuff. We then said, well, what are the information systems that cover each of those spaces? And we wanted for each of those spaces, those chunks, ideally we wanted to have a single core source of truth for each of those chunks. So our 20 business systems um, chunks, we therefore wanted to have about 20 major information systems that would be the master of the master record lots of bits hanging off it but the master record for each of those chunks so that gives us a way of describing what's going on in the business who's doing what and how they connect across the whole business which means you've got business processes that cross between business silos and also how you're dealing with the information and information flows and the master information needed which gives you your IT strategy. So a capability map or a functional business model gives you all of this in a way that's really easy to see, to understand and to use for real practical purposes.